all right welcome back guys so yeah so like i said this is the um, third session of the introduction to software testing so it's been hosted by the city of god rccg in crayford in london so and if you want to contact us so you got our details in there so you can contact us using admin at rccg city of god .com. So it's a free online training that we offer. So there are other trainings that we do offer to also introduction to IT, Excel, Word, um, testing with Java, and also testing with C Sharp. So and BDD with Specflow and Cucumber. So we have different yeah um, training that we do offer. So yeah, you can get in touch if you want to enroll for any of our free courses. Yeah, so today we're going to go through the other part of the introduction. So I'll start with test design techniques. So there are different test design that we need to, techniques that we need to talk about today. So let's go through that quickly. So, so uh, last week I briefly mentioned specification based te um, testing, which is also called black box testing. So, and I said also is one type of dynamic testing. So today, we're going to look into into that also. So which type of techniques can you use for specification-based testing? So, so like, like I said last week also, specification-based is when you have requirements actually. So, and also is black box because you don't know, you don't understand or you don't have knowledge of the structure of the applications. So basically you can uh, you cannot check inside the box. So the box is so it's black. So so what you're going to be concentrating on is what the software or the application does on how uh, not how it does it. So not how it's going to do it, but what exactly it does. So that's what you're going to be concentrating upon. So you could use it for both functional and also non-functional testing. So, but majorly, I think people use um, specificational testing for functional testing. So, and to test its features and also is functions also so but if you want to use for non-functional testing you will rather focus on on you focus basically on how the system does something not what it does basically like the speed and also like the accuracy and something like the load so but it's basically how it does that particular uh, feature know what exactly that feature is about so so today we're going to talk about all those techniques that you can use for specification based um, approach and also like i said also there's also structure based um, testing techniques we're going to look into also so for structure based as i said you have privy to the internal structure of the software to derive your test cases. So you can look into the application, you can see what the structure is all about. So that's why it is called um, white box because you can see through the application, you can know the structure of the application, you can see the pseudocode of the application, you can see the code, you can see uh, what is what actually makes that software to work. So you can it, you also have the knowledge of how this that sort of particular software is implemented so that's why it's called like a black box you can see through what is inside so and you know what the loops is you know what the statement is you can actually measure on different conditions that are covered you can know how many times a loop is executed so those are the things that you look into when you are doing your uh, structure based testing so and also you have experience based testing so for experience based testing 
So you only use that when you don't have access to the requirements. Or that's one thing also. And also very, very important that you have the skills and also you have the knowledge of the application that you are testing. And also you have the background also. It's, those are very, very prime contributors to your test conditions. You, you have the background knowledge. You have the knowledge. You have the skills of, of that particular application. So those knowledge could be both technical or business. So, so that you can be able to bring that into into the testing. So you need to have different perspectives of the test analysis and also the design process. So it's very, very important. So you could also bring your experience uh, on similar applications that you, you've tested similar application and you can bring that in to, to say, okay, oh, I've tested this application. I've not tested this application before, but I've tested similar application that looks the same thing. So in that approach, you can use experience-based techniques for, for that. So, so in this approach now, so where do you now apply different categories of testing? What do you use to determine which type of testing to use. So like I said um, before now, specification-based techniques are appropriate for any level of testing. And also, most importantly, the specification must assist. You must have the specification. You must have a document that you can use to test that application. Then also, for structure-based techniques, it's basically used by most developers for unit testing and integration testing. So, and you can use it when you, you can have a good tool that will be able to, you'll be able to use to measure code coverage. That, okay, you can say how many statements have I covered, how many decisions has it covered. So there are some tools right now that draws that for you, basically. It goes into your core and be able to, you know, uh, measure the uh, you, how the metrics about your unit testing so to see how many coverage of your um, code has been covered by your test so so that is also very very important in for structure based techniques so for experience one actually like I said you can use it to complement uh, structure uh, specification base or in a case where there is no specification at all so or that specification is inadequate or is out of date. So in that regard, there's nothing for you to base your testing on for specification uh, using specification-based approach. So for that reason, you might have to use your experience based on similar application. So, so yeah, that is how you can actually uh, apply different categories of, of these techniques and you can actually select the right one that you can use at any particular time. So when you start to test, you need to know what's the approach that you want to use actually based on if you have specification and if you have a, a document, then you need to use specification based. If there's no document also, then you might use experience. If you have access to the code and you can see the code, you can, yeah, uh, obviously to that then yeah structure based techniques is, is appropriate all right so now let's talk about the test techniques so there are different techniques that we're going to talk about today but I'll focus on most important two the two one that I think is very very important for um, people that join testing for from beginning as in for for beginners so as I said last week right so or two weeks ago I think uh, exhaustive testing it's not possible at all for testing which is one of the principles of testing you can you cannot say that I have tested this application Exclusively, you cannot say I have covered every scenario possible. For a trivial application, yes, but for a complex application, you might not be able to say, to, to say that. But now, if you cannot say I've covered everything, 
is that good enough? No, it's not good enough. But that's where the test uh, techniques help you to reduce the number of test cases that you can use to execute. You can be, that can be used actually. Why? you increase your test coverage. So you can be able to say, yeah, I've covered all the scenarios. I've covered all the test cases that are, have been alighted based on your test coverage. So that's where you need to know your tech, um, testing techniques properly and also know the appropriate one for the application that you are testing. Because if you use the right techniques, then you can easily identify the test conditions that are sometimes difficult to recognize. You can actually use the right test condition for, for that particular purpose. So so as you can see on on three diagram, you have different type of testing. I've said last time also static testing where you don't even need to execute the application. And you have dynamic testing where you execute the application. And we're going to focus on on dynamic today. So we are not going to focus on static testing so we're going to focus on dynamics today so and in terms of specification you can see we have use cases you have decision table equivalence partitioning we have boundary value analysis you know, analysis we have state you know, transition and also in experience you can use error guessing you can use exploratory testing and also structure based testing so for for today as I said we're going to focus on dynamic testing I would be focusing on two which is equivalent partitioning and also boundary value analysis so for today I, I think for every tester every tester should be able to know this particular two techniques very well to be honest so uh, I'll focus on that even this evening so then we can continue so yeah equivalent partitioning so like i said it's a good all run specification based on uh, techniques so you can use it at any level of testing and it i would say i strongly recommend that this is a good techniques to use first to use if you if you are testing and you don't know this approach i think you you are not actually testing properly I think when I started the introduction, I said everyone could do testing, everyone can do testing, everyone will be able to do testing. But this is when the chips are down, to be honest. So when you now need to use the techniques to have you to be able to do your testing properly, this is where you need to know when to do your testing and how to do your testing. It's different from uh, an ad hoc tester that just become testing and just start testing. But for you to be a professional tester, you need to use the right techniques. So what is one of those in, on tests on techniques that you need to use also? So you, you could say, yeah, basically, equivalent testing is common sense approach, actually. So, but sometimes they say common sense is not that common, even though it is a common sense. So it's not that common to everyone. So most testers will normally may not practice this, actually even though you think it's a common sense. So the idea of this testing is to divide your test cases into two, into groups. So sets that can be considered to be the same are put into one partition, and the other set are put into another partition. So you, you divide these test cases into groups or sets, so each of the sets can now be considered and treated in a different way. So then what's going to happen now, if you have your test condition, so you group them into parts that could be treated the same way. Then from in the group, you now select that is um, a test case from that group. So you don't have to test everything. You only need to focus on those groups that you've selected. Uh, I, I will give an example later. So. So what, uh, in this case, you only need one test condition for each of the partition, like I said. So uh, I, was, I was given a, an instance of that. So this is because you, we, assume, we assume that each partition will behave this, the same way. And because if partition will behave the same way, they could be treated the same way also. 
So, and that is the assumption, but technically I think that assumption will be true. So that's what you will need to work. But if the condition in the partition does not work or they don't behave the same way, then you have not been able to partition it properly. So you need to know that partition that you are doing will, should behave the same way and then you can be able to use them. Um, I'll put one test cases on one test case to that particular partition. So now let's go to an example. A simple example is if you have an ap application that accepts number from 1 to 100. So, and you can know that this application or an app is going to have a valid number and can accept this valid number, any number from 1 to 100. So, uh, hold on, I think this is wrong actually, it's, it should be one minute, so one minute. Alright, so I said an application that accepts a number from 1 to 99. So that means we have invalid, invalid numbers from 1 to 99. So which means that you're going to have invalid numbers also. So your invalid number will be any number greater than 99 or any number less than 1. So then, of course, numerical numbers. So we now have two partitions right now. One partition is a valid partition, and one partition is the invalid partition. That's a simple way to actually partition your test cases. To say, okay, let me focus on the valid one. What, my, what are my valid ones? So what are my invalid ones? So, and then once you are able to um, partition that into that section, then you can now say treat the valid one as the same, right? The valid one, you can tell, select any number from 1 to 99 with the assumption that they will behave the same way. So even if you take 1, 2, 3, 4, or any 99, so they are going to behave the same way. They are going to, if you enter that, it's going to be the same number, the same test case that you are doing. So that is the assumption for equivalent partition. So also, then you go to invalid um, partition. So invalid partition can have also different groups also. You can say oh, the first group that we have is any number greater than 99. So in that group, you can decide to take any number that is above 99. So and you, the assumption is that number, they will behave the same thing. That your system should reject that number. So for if you put 100, 101 to any number, that number should, should be rejected. And also the same way also for any number that is greater than or less than one also, it's going to be an invalid um, data. So then your application should also reject that um, number. So the same way also for numerical um, numbers also. So not numerical rather, so like alphanumeric, special characters. So the list is endless at this particular time. You can, you can, yeah, you cannot do exhaustive testing at this point because there are lots of things that you can, you can actually uh, combine. Yeah, there are different combinations of. You talk about special character. You talk about combining different numbers together. You talk about maybe uh, if you're talking about integer numbers, now you be talking about invalid numbers. Also, could be negative numbers. So, yeah, all these are kind of in this particular scenario. So, so this is what uh, I am, we are saying in this particular equivalence partitioning. So the next uh, method uh, or techniques is boundary value analysis. Boundary value analysis. So this is based you base your testing on boundaries between partitions. And as a developer, they know that this is kind of one of the big issues. So if you ever written program before and you've written like if A is equal to B or A is equal to C or A is equal to 2, let's assume on a normal scenario in this particular case, if you are going to be writing a program that accepts 1 to 99, Maybe you will say if uh, A is greater than 99, so that is invalid. So 
But in that regard, a tester can, or maybe a developer, who want to write greater than 99 and just say greater and put greater or equal to 99. That is a mistake because what's going to happen is like, so that application normally should reject um, should reject any number greater than 99. But because you've, you, you now put equal to, that means if you supply 99, it's going to reject 99. So that what it happens. So that's what can happen in this particular scenario. So if I say that one again, for instance, if you are a developer and you are writing a code, and you can say this application should reject a number greater than 99. You can say if x is greater than 99. Let's say the developer was about to write that, and his name is John. John was about to say if x is greater than 99 then reject this uh, or say error error or something like that and john is about to do that and james comes in and say john uh let's go for a coffee ah, okay yeah then they went for a coffee and then he comes back again and you oh then he maybe forgot where he was on his own thought and he just decided to put equal to again so then before that then what's going to happen then the application would not accept 99, even though it should accept 99, because instead of saying greater than, it has now put greater or equal to 99. So those are the issues that happens during programming. It's going to be like a little mistake like that that developer has made. So that's where you need to design your test cases properly to capture any issues like this. So, so that if you now use the boundary value analysis, so you design your test cases based on boundary between partitions so we've decided we've no uh, partitions before like we have the other one we have both boundary um, partitions and we have invalid boundaries also in the one that we have so you can decide to separate your partition into two but you need to look at those test cases it might not be as easy as saying valid or invalid it might be as difficult as you need to look at those test cases and then divide them into how they need to be treated together. So, so but we, I'll go through another example for you to analyze the techniques. Okay, so we continue for from there right now. So, a good example is this, right? So. In the last example, I did one, so this is also kind of wrong, one minute. So for, for this now, let's say we have this particular text box that accepts number from 1 to 99, right? So, and we've done similar one for equivalent partitioning right now. So for equivalent partition, we only have two partitions for the valid one and for the invalid one. So in this case, we can decide to take five and we can take zero and we can take 100. Those are the three test cases that we want in this particular instance. So because we're only going to take one partition, one test case from each of the partition. One, from the invalid, which is from less than zero, we can take minus one or zero. And also for the valid one, we can decide to take, let's take five. And also for the invalid one, we can take 100 or we can take one or two or anything greater than 100. Those are for the equivalent partition. So if you go to the boundary value, the same question, the same scenario, and then for different techniques this time around so if you now look into that so now we know like i said before that we know some of the issues that we have is basically at the boundary when developers uh wanted to write greater than and they write greater or equal to sometimes when they wanted to write less than they mistakenly write greater than so those are the issues that you have at the boundary so now so for you to be able to catch those errors, you need to now test at the boundaries. So in these instances, what you need to do now, you need to 
have test case that covers the boundary because you know if you're able to um, address the boundary the inside would behave the same thing right the inside of the uh, of the boundary will have the same because they are on the same partitions they will do the same thing they will behave the same way so what we're going to do we're going to look at our numbers that is going to be accepted so we know it's going to accept 99 no it's going to accept one we don't, it's going to accept number from 1 to 99. So we take 1 as number that is in the valid partition. Uh, we take 99 as a number that is also within the partition of the valid ones. And also, those two numbers are in the boundaries. So, and also, what we can also do is to say, what at our invalid ones, invalid data. Is zero is one, which is right at the edge of the boundary. So, and also we look at uh, after 99, what is the next value after 99? So that is 100. Then we build our test cases to that. So in some cases, some people will use like three data at the boundary, which is means that you have zero, one, and two and you have 99, no, 98, 99, and 100. Some people can also go ahead and say, instead of saying 100, you also say 101. But what that does for you is like, because, like I said, if the developer has said less than or equal to, or greater than or plus one, something like that. So you consider that 100 is not accepted, 101 is not also accepted. So once you're able to consider those two, you don't worry about what, what are the next one after 101. The same way also, you consider 98 and you consider 99. So, and also you consider one and two. Because it's possible that one is not accepted, but sh two should be able to accept. So you consider those two. So, but in a simple scenario, you just want to say, I consider zero not to be accepted. I want to consider one has been accepted. I want to consider 99 has been accepted. And I want to also consider 100 as not been accepted. So you have your valid scenario, valid data as 1 and 99, and also your invalid as 0 and 100. So those are how you want to write your test cases for that. So another good example that we will have found right now is you have an application also that accepts uh, password and this password should be minimum of six characters and maximum of ten characters. So in this case, it's not as easy as what we've done at the former one where we have invalid and valid. So it's it's more than that. So this one, we, you have partitions. So you have more than two partitions in there. So you have 0 to 5, right? Because 0 to 5 characters should not be accepted. 6 to 10 characters should be accepted. And also you have 11 to 14 or 11 to whatever it is uh, should not be accepted. So that's what you want to, you want to do. So now, you want to enter any number, any um, length from 0 to 5. So, preferably, I would say you want to test that if I don't enter any password, we start going to be fine. And you want also use 5 also, like using the boundary. So, but in this case, you can see that we are going to be using um, equivalent partition and boundary value analysis together. So in this case, because you're going to be um, putting your test cases into partitions, at equ equivalent partitionings, and also you're going to also be using the boundary of that particular partition that you've already set out. So our first partition is zero, to, is zero to five, our second partition six to 10, and the next partition is 11 to 14. So those are the partitions that we set, but also, we're going to be using the boundary value of those partitions. So now we're going to set send is zero. That means we are not going to enter any password and we're going to pe press enter. 
so then we should expect an error to be displayed and the same way also you want to also write a letter or a password of length of five and then you should be able to see that the error is also displayed because the minimum character should be six so and that should be your invalid um, um, text so you also need to do your valid one so you enter six characters and if you accept it and you also you enter a password with 10 characters and that also should be accepted then after that you also want to consider your invalid characters also your invalid test cases also now the invalid test cases you want to enter 11 characters so because that also is at the boundary so and also you want to enter yeah I think that should be should be fine because from 11 is not I don't I wouldn't say 11 to 14 so because it could be like forever so to be honest so and um, that is it so you can put any number that you want so that's what so and those third part uh, the third partition should not be accepted so that is a uh, is a is a good example for you so that is also a practical one also that you can use to when you're going to mix the equivalent partition with boundary value analysis.